So in this video we will show two different options for installing an operating system using Ansible. And um, we do have modules available for this, but we can also just do a, a Pixie boot and install it that way. So we look at both, both options. First of all for a Pixie boot, all you need to do is just to change it to a one-time override for Pixie and then restart the server. Uh, in this way we have Ansible kicking off um, the reboot and it will boot to the DHCP server, which will then go in and kick off the install from the TFTP server and then you will pull in a kickstart file uh, to set all the settings from the web server so that they, uh, when it boots up it gets all the, the options that we need to have. And um, there are other options of course uh, to boot from but uh, we can actually have a quick look at that now. If you go into uh, a browser and look at the Redfish options uh, under system embedded we can find, apart from Pixie Boot, whatever, what are the options we have available in there to us. And uh, there are quite a few. In this case, however, for our installation, we just care about Pixie. So there is also one other option, and that is to use the iDRAC OS deployment module for Ansible. That will automate a lot of things for us, and it will essentially just have Ansible tell the PowerEdge server to boot from an ISO image on an NFS server. Uh, of course, in that case, we will have to modify the ISO image so that it has a kickstart file built in. And that's what we're going to do now. So you can see we do have a, an NFS share and we have an ISO image called custom ESXi. So if we switch over to the NFS server, we can now see that that ISO file is present. Now we just built this, so it's um, easy now just to quickly show how we built it. We're not going to go into any detail really, but just so you see that in the temp folder we have basically unpacked an ESXi install image. We have created a kickstart ks.cfg file and we are pointing the boot cfg file uh, to that kickstart file so that it's been run once the, uh, the server boots from this ISO. And that's really all you need to do. Then you can do like create ISOFS or um, some other uh, method for creating the actual ISO. But there are several options for that. So let's just uh, run the playbook and uh, see the installation start. We'll monitor it through here, but uh, we'll skip ahead a little bit. So you can see it's now starting from the ISO. And the installation finishes up pretty quickly. And we can see there now that we have a server uh, with DHCP set um, as default. The other option is to use a Pixie boot. This is uh, the traditional way of doing things. It gives you a, a bit more control over what you do as well. So it's quite easy. All you need to do is change the uh, target to Pixie and then restart the server. If you look at the actual TFTP boot server, we see we have the HTTP, uh, the HTTP server set up, and that is pointing to itself as the TFTP server. If you look at the TFTP server in turn, we can see that uh, in the slash TFTP boot directory, we have the installation files for ESXi, and we're also pointing to a web server that has a kickstart file. And this kickstart file has uh, the name of uh, the NIC MAC address of this particular server so that it will pick up on this and get its individual settings done. So now we just tail syslog to see when the pixie boot happens. We can track that and we'll monitor the uh, the server as well uh, from the UI so we can see it. So we'll just kick off the playbook, bring up the server GUI and uh, wait for the install to take place. The playbook finishes very quickly, it doesn't wait for the entire process to finish. The server boots to Pixie, as instructed. The installation starts off and finishes. And we can then verify that the settings that we had there for hostname as well as IP address are correct, as stated in the kickstart file. And that is all. Thank you so much.